Thanks, Carter. Really good session. I think I learned actually a few things there. I haven't built an agent yet myself with Teams AI Library, so super cool to see that. I'm going to pivot slightly to something um, a little different and talk about CI and CD with the Teams app CLI. So this continues the series that I've been doing over the past few months. So just a recap on where we've gotten to so far as we've gone through an introduction um, just overall about Teams Toolkit, which are our dev tools for creating Teams apps, um, also Outlook extensions, um, really anything that the Unified App Manifest supports. And we have extensions in VS Code and VS, so we talked about those. You could catch up on the recordings for those things if you missed them. And I also talked about an introduction to the Teams app CLI, which is um, kind of a prerequisite to maybe some of this content. So if you missed that or maybe some of this is unfamiliar, go back and check that out. And then last time I was here, we talked about deploying to Azure using Teams Toolkit. So today, well, we don't want to do that. Today, I'm going to just recap uh, what CI CD looks like. So let me go. We're not going to talk about Azure today. Talk about CI CD. So the Teams app CLI has a bunch of commands that you could use in your pipelines. Uh, to do something like CI CD specifically for your Teams apps. And so, what I've set up is just a quick demo um, to show you what that looks like in uh, GitHub Workflow. Uh, so, a little prerequisite if you're unfamiliar with GitHub Workflows, I think that would be okay. You can follow along and then you could go dive into the docs, or you could also um, check out the documentation we have, which I'll share a link here in a second uh, for setting this up in GitHub or Azure DevOps. So this is what I've done for CI. So this is my workflow file in my project. And I will share a link to the repo for this later. You can uh, take a look at it yourself. So in my CI file, um, what I wanted to do for this project I have is to use the Teams app CLI to run some validation tests on my manifest. So when I check in my app package and I have my manifest here, uh, one of the things that the toolkit can do is just run a validation on this for you. and we also are adding some features so that way you can run the validation logic that Teams, uh, Teams Developer Portal does. So this is things like making sure that your app is not going to have any breaking rules that would prevent it from being published. And so you, right now you can do that locally uh, with the CLI, but it's a little trickier to do it in um, CI due to authenticating with your M365 account. So those are features uh, that we're working on. So right now we can do manifest schema checks. And so that's what I've added here. So you can see IntelliSense get out, or these dialogues get out of my way. Um, just setting up the GitHub action. I have a couple of variables that are needed. Uh, these are the things that are in the app manifest, which are part of the toolkit. So that's stuff like this. That way, uh, the, you know, this will break a schema, which you can see here. That's what VS Code is complaining about. So we need to fill those things in first and install the CLI and here I am running the Teams app validate command. And that's really simple. And then I have it set up here for a CD. Uh, so I can do some deployment things. And I have it set up here to be dependent on my CI being uh, completed. So this is just special workflow syntax for GitHub. So when my CI thing completes, um, and not just completes, but I kind of also only want my CD to run when it's successful. So I've added this check on my job here to make sure that when the CI is successful, then do this deployment. Otherwise, if I fail some validation checks or something or whatever else I add into CI, I don't really want to deploy this stuff. So I'm going to just do it when it's uh, successful. Same kind of thing with setting up the environment variables here. And uh, we've got to set up node, install this uh, CLI again. And the CLI, I'll put a link in chat here in case you're unfamiliar. The Teams app CLI is an NPM package, so I put a link in the chat. You can install it from there. And here we're using uh, the Teams app CLI to authenticate with Azure via a service principle. So I have set up an identity or an Azure, or what is it? Entra app is what it's called now. So Entra app. And I've set all that up, and I'm using GitHub secrets for these things uh, to keep things simple. So that's this syntax here. So I've added these on my repo. I'll show you that in a second. And you can do interactive false here so that it doesn't prompt a web browser or anything like that because we're in a headless environment. And 
what that's going to do is just uh, let me authenticate with my Azure account so that way I can run the commands for Teams app, which is the next one is to deploy. So Teams app deploy is going to go through my deploy steps. In this case, in my Teams app YAML, I have deployed all these things to happen during deploy. So one of them being an Azure zip deploy. That's why I need my Azure account authenticated there. So I'm going to deploy and up oh, I closed it. And then what's the other thing I'm going to do? Package uh, my app. So this is going to just create the zip package and then use that zip package that I can upload to the platform as an artifact. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let me go over to the repo and I'll share a link with this. This is the repo for a project I made for build last year. Um, just made it easy for me to add um, CI and C to the, CI and CD to this. So let me share a link to this so you can uh, check it out if you want. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, so here's those, uh, once I push those files, GitHub automatically picks these things up. Here's the CI uh, run. So you can see I did a push a little while ago just to make sure things were gonna be smooth for you. But I will let you know that um, I had many failed attempts before this and I hid those, so that way you wouldn't laugh at me. Um, because I kept making mistakes in the JSON because I'm, I'm still learning. Uh, but we can take a look at this and you can look through the CI step and see here's all the different steps that I just explained. And we can see the validation step and Team Toolkit said everything's good. Once the CI is complete, the CI or the CD step will run. So we can go in here and look at Bill. We can go through all these are all the different steps expressed in the uh, YAML file. And everything was good with that as well. So. I deployed to Azure. And then if I go back one, and down here I have this artifact. This is my app package. So this is the zip file that I can then use uh, to give to my admin or whatever your internal process is to get your app in your tenant. Um, or you could take this to a Teams developer portal and publish it. Um, there's kind of different ways depending on whether you're running things inside of your tenant or whether you're shipping them across all tenants. So there's kind of different process there. But at the end of the day, you really just need the app package uh, for these things. So there's my artifact, and that's pretty much all that's needed to do uh, CI and CD. If you want to follow along and do this for yourself, I'll put the docs in here. We have uh, these workflow files and all the steps to set up either secret-based authentication or certificate-based authentication with the Teams app CLI. You can add them to an existing pipeline or workflow, and then you can kind of pick and choose what steps you want. But um, like, for example, you may not do Teams app deploy if you already have your own deploy scripts. And instead, you might want to uh, just do things like package or validate um, uh, with the Teams app CLI. So I think... That is it, and I'll be a little ahead of schedule to give the next person some more time. So let me know if you have any questions about this, and if you folks have any other topics you want to see around Teams Toolkit or app development. I think I had a bunch of question marks on my slides uh, for what's next, so I have some ideas. Um, so I will see you next time. Thanks for listening.